Hi, today we're going to make this. The specific use case we're going to work towards is a starting soon countdown screen for streamers, people on Twitch, Facebook gaming, whatever. But the tools and methods in this video will be applicable to anyone that needs a countdown timer or anyone that just wants to dive deeper into the motion graphics tools inside the Fusion page. We'll be working towards an exceptionally clean node tree that shows off how an animation like this can be made with minimal keyframes. So let's get started. We're gonna start in Resolve on the edit page and we're gonna make sure our effects library is open and go to effects and drag fusion composition onto our timeline. For this example, I'm going to build out a three minute countdown. So I'm going to right click and select change clip duration or control D. I'm going to change that duration to three minutes and 10 seconds so we have some wiggle room. And then if our playhead is over that clip, we can click this fusion icon and open the fusion page. The first thing we're gonna do is make our actual countdown. We're gonna click text plus to get one text node. And then we are going to right click inside this styled text field and go to time code. If we click one or two to preview that text node, we will see that as we scrub our timeline, we now have time code that is ticking up. If our text node is selected, we can go from tools to modifiers where we see controls for that time code effect. So I'm going to unclick hours and frames. So we just have minutes and seconds. But if we scrub, we will see that that time code is ticking up. So to reverse this, all we need to do is with that text plus selected, Click shift space to select a tool and go to time speed and click add. Then in time speed, we can change the speed from one to negative one. And you can already see here it starts at just over three minutes and over the course of our timeline gets down to zero. But since we want our timer to actually start at three minutes in that time speed node, we can add a negative delay so that timer actually starts at three minutes exactly. Now, if you'll remember in our animation, we actually have two copies of this countdown timer, but using nodes, we don't need to copy and paste this time speed to have two copies. We can instead use the one output of this time speed node to move to two transform nodes. Let me show you what I mean. First, I'm going to dip back into this text node and change my font to something a little more interesting. In my example, I use this Museo Sans font. I believe this is a default one of the Adobe fonts. But then I'm going to go to time speed, shift space, and grab a transform node. And if I preview this transform node and move my text, you will see it just moves it. But if I add another transform and connect that transform to that same output of time speed, if I preview that, you will see it is back to its default position and I can drag that down. And if I create a merge node and merge those two transform nodes, you will see I now have two copies of that countdown text being created from a single text and time speed node. So now that we have this countdown timer on what will be the top and bottom of this rotation animation, what we now need to do is make the text for the top and bottom as well. So I'm going to click two copies of this text plus node, merge them together, and then we can type in those two different text nodes and position those in about the same areas as that countdown timer. And then if we merge those two merges together, you'll see that we have our countdown timer and our text overlapping each other all on one screen. This looks like a mess, but it's actually what we want. From here on, we need to use masks to reveal certain nodes at certain times. It's smoke and mirrors, it's a shell game, it's a magic, magic trick. trick. I'm gonna start by clicking this rectangle mask tool and previewing that in window one. And while it is previewed in one, you'll see that we also get the outline of it in window two. So I'm going to move that down and scale that up so that it completely covers one set of our countdown timer and text. Then with that rectangle selected, I'm going to add a transform node. And this is very important. By default, it will add this rectangle as a mask to the transform. But what we want to do is change that over to the input for that transform node. So we can preview the rectangle. And then if we preview the transform, you will see any transform we add to that rectangle is affected by the transform node. Then we actually need to go back to our two merge nodes that have all of our text and countdown timers. And after each merge node, we need to add a matte control node. And if we drag the output of this transform node with our rectangle mask to the garbage mask input of this matte control, 
you'll see that as I rotate this transform node, it only reveals half of the screen at a time based on that rotation, which is exactly what we want. Now, if we just took this transform node and took it to the other mat control, as we rotated that angle of that transform, we would have unavoidable overlap. When what we really want is as that rotation happens, when the countdown is revealed on the top, the text is revealed on the bottom. So what we need to do is add another transform node after this first, take the output to the import of the transform node, and on that second transform, we're gonna have a static rotation of 180 degrees. Then if we take that output to the garbage mask input on this mat control, you'll see that we have the effect we want. Whenever we change the angle on that first transform node, when the text is on top, the countdown is in bottom, and when the countdown is on top, the text is on bottom. Next, we are going to actually add our animation. And because of how our tree is set up, we only need to animate one node. I'm gonna select this first transform node for our mask, go to about 10 seconds in, and if I zero at this angle, our mask will reset and I'm going to click this diamond to set a keyframe, move forward just over a second or two, and then we are going to change this angle from zero to negative 180. And then I'm going to move forward to about the next transition point and click that keyframe again. Nothing will happen, we haven't changed it. We're just setting those three keyframes. And then if we jump into the spline tool, select that angle, click this button, zoom to fit, we will see those three keyframes we set. We have it at zero, it rotates and swaps that text and countdown and then holds for the next few seconds. So we're gonna select those first two keyframes, press F to flatten and press T to add our precise easing controls. I'm gonna have an ease in of about 70 and an ease out of about 50. And then I'm going to select all three of these keyframes and click this set relative button. And if we zoom out, you will see that those three keyframes play their action, and when the last keyframe is done, it replays that action progressively. So now, every few seconds, we have that animation all from those three keyframes. And if we change any of these keyframes, if we have that transition take much longer, you'll see that reflected in every subsequent copy of that animation. So now we have our animation in place for the entire three minute countdown with those regular rotations to swap those texts and countdown timers. But it doesn't look great having this sharp edge cut across our text. So we need to add that rotating line from our original animation. Here's what you do. We're going to add a new plain background white or light gray. And we are going to add a rectangle mask to that. Then we can change the shape of that rectangle. And if we drag the output of the background to the output of this merge, it will add another merge and add that bar on top of all of our previous animation. This time I'm gonna increase the corner radius so this bar is a little more rounded. And if we preview, we will see that nothing happens because this background with this rectangle mask has no animation of its own. So coming from the output of this background node, I'm going to add a transform node. And with that transform node selected, I'm going to go to that angle parameter, right click and select expression. That will add this expression window that we're not going to type in but instead what we're going to do is come up here to this pin and click that. So the settings for this transform node will stay up in our inspector no matter what other node we select. So we are going to select that transform node that we have keyframed and down in that new transform node, we are going to click and hold this little plus and that will drag out this little pick whip and we are going to drag it to that angle that we have keyframed and let go when I'm over that angle. And now for that second transform node, the angle it will be using is the angle from this other transform node. So if we start scrubbing, when we reach that next point where the keyframes kick in, we will see that background and that new rectangle mask move perfectly in sync with that animation that is swapping that top and bottom text. So now we have an entire three minute animation, this countdown with this rotation that swaps this top and bottom text and those countdown timers with only three keyframes. If we connect this merge to our main media out and add a transform after the fact, because this transform comes later in our node tree, anything we do here will affect that entire set of animation. If we want to position it in a certain part of the screen, we can do that and the animation will stay perfectly in sync. And then from here, the only other thing I did was add that wavy 3D background. 
That background is a template that comes free in Fusion, so I opened up the effects library, templates, backgrounds, and scaled down to waver and drag that in. If we preview that, we will see the bars here. And if we double click, we will open it up. This is very confusing, but the only things I did were going to this 3D camera node, moving to the transform controls for that, and added a little bit of rotation on the z-axis so it comes in at an angle and then in the renderer 3d node i went down to accumulation effects and turned on that and depth of field so we have this cool depth of field effect so it more subtly fades into the background to close this group you can click Control e and then with that selected you can add a background make sure that background layer is on the background and the waiver is on the foreground. And then with this background layer, we can add another merge, drag the output from this main countdown animation to that merge, and then drag that to our main media out. And we will have our custom animation that we made with this cool 3D waving background. I grabbed this 3D waving background because I thought it was cool and it was a free template available to me. Because this is a fairly complex 3D effect, it will take a much longer time to render with this effect going on in the background. But if you use this countdown animation, you can put any background behind it. You can use your own branded colors or icons or create your own 3D effect in the background. So there you have a custom starting soon countdown screen. It can be whatever length you want. It can show whatever text you want. It can be over any background you want. You can say goodbye to boring static countdown screens with the regular animation and with this background especially you can hold your viewers' attention until you're ready to get your show started. Thank you so much for watching. I know we covered a whole lot in this tutorial, but if it was helpful, please drop a like, leave a comment below with any questions, and if you would like to stay informed with new tutorials coming out soon, please consider subscribing. Thanks.